Welcome everybody. Um, on this session, we're going to talk about uh, heat stress in a dairy farm, how heat stress is affecting our dairy business, and how our AllFlex monitoring solution can help in mitigating some of the issues. So, when discussing heat stress in a dairy in a dairy farm, and as cows are in stress of in productivity in, in milk production stress. Um, the combination of high yielding and environmental pressure is, is affecting our productivity and our economical performance. Uh, the direct event, the direct effect on, uh, on, the, on the milking cow will be a reduction in feed efficiency, reduction in productivity, in, um, in uh, reproduction uh, performance. And as a whole, this is a situation that where the overall welfare is, is affected. Um, as we are in, uh, at most cases, we are in a confined control environment. We have the luxury to influence on the conditions and uh, by using some sort of a mitigation system, cooling fans, shade, uh, ventilation. And uh, as we do with our houses where we turn on the air condition, and it's always a question when to, to use it, how much to use it, and so on. So in this presentation, we'll elaborate a little bit on uh, what are the challenges when, and, and uh, how to read the challenges through using our system and how to take better decisions. So looking at the welfare challenge from sky height, um, the, main, the predominant uh, issue is economical loss driven from the fact that you are investing more or less the same investment, your day-to-day -day investment, while the cows deliver way less, less milk production, uh, a drop in reproduction and future replacement performance and so on. Uh, assessing the cost, the costs are turning to be super high. You have here an assessment of the US market coming from the USDA. And we're looking at significant numbers. And the biggest challenge is not to understand that you need to do something. It's more of how much and when. Um, it, it turns to be, if you're looking at the graph and the model over there, it turns to be that at most cases, you'll, as a farmer, you'll find yourself in a situation of, of overdoing or underdoing, as it is very hard to assess when it is good enough and when you are continuing to pull money into the system, to put money into the system, while the benefit that is driven from your investment is not equal to what you're expecting to get. So our goal is to identify this sweet spot here where we have an, an optimal situation of invested over revenue. And we need technology in order to help us to do that. Uh, and I would say this is the core of this session. So the idea of uh, monitoring the conditions of the, in the farm and to leverage this monitoring into, a, into a, some sort of thermal pressure assessment is not new to us. It's, it's not something that we invented. Um, and there have been, along, along the history, there have been several technologies introducing into our, into our business. Uh, the first one was to record the surrounding the conditions in the farm and to us to align or to correlate these conditions with the productivity of the milking cows. And it's very common to use a THI uh, index, temperature humidity index. It is a combination of the temperature in the farm and the, in, and the humidity. And we have a scale range assessing the, the THI score uh, or correlating between the THI score to the, to the condition or the influence of this one on the conditions of the animal. This is not new and it's super low costs. 
and the, the advantage is that there is a lot of experience with how to use it and the, and the setting it up is not very expensive. The downside or the challenge here is that we're measuring the environment. It's, it is, we have the genetic in the middle and the physical condition in the farm that actually, although it might be super warm, the, cow are, uh, the cows are actually expressing different experience and the other way around. So as we understood that we really, we physically want to, to touch the animals and to measure what is happening with the animal, we got to the idea of introducing thermologger. It's this little button that you have here in the picture. Uh, we put these loggers through the vagina with uh, these, some sort of a sitter sticks. And, and voila, we are measuring the core temperature. The advantage is that we are directly measuring the temperature of the animals and the warmer the animal, probably the, the higher the pressure on, the, the higher the physiological pressure. The downside is, uh, is that first this technology is kind of expensive. And moreover, you're getting a retrospective collection data because this data is, this, you, this equipment is not transmitting from within the animal. You have to put it in to record for a duration of time, take it out, and then to do a retrospective analysis. And you don't, you have very little insight of what is happening now with the cows. Second, as this is expensive and, and you are putting some, uh, a vaginal, uh, 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 equipment, uh, equipment in the cow. It is not very common to use it on pregnant cows due to uh, uh, the risk of infection. And moreover, as it is expensive, you're not covering the entire herd. And then you get a subset of the data, which provide a challenge. And on top of everything, you know what is the cold temperature. It, you don't know how the cow feels. And this is taking us to our solution. Um, here, we, you don't need an extra equipment. The only thing that you need to do is to equip all your cows with our tags, ear tags, or collars. It doesn't matter. And then, based on the behaviors as recorded by the tag, we can lay out, as you have here in the pictures, the time budget of the cows. So, what you have here in, in, on the y axis is the value of different behaviors per hour, per an average hour in, uh, I would say per, per hour through the day. And uh, on the x-axis you have the days, okay? Like a day over duration of time. Then the orange series will represent a heavy breathing or a state of heavy breathing. And as cows are, are moving into the summer, you can see the increased portion of the orange state or the orange behavior over positive activities such as rumination and feed collection. This is telling us that as it's getting warmer, cows are actually shifting from a positive activity of collecting and processing uh, ingredients that provide energy and support milk production. And this is happening due to the increase of a negative activity, which is heavy breathing, where the cow is, is relieving heat, but that goes on expense of, of uh, energy balance and long-term physical stability. Um, saying all, uh, sharing all this one with you is super nice, but it requires some validation. And during 2019, we've been equipping several cows in kind of warm locations in Israel uh, with thermologues, as I showed previously, while in parallel recording our state behaviors. And what you learn here from this graph is on the x-axis, you have the vaginal, an average cow vaginal temperature, while on the y-axis, you have the proportion or the percentage of the cows within this population that were recorded with heavy breathing. And the variability represents the difference of the variability around the average of the entire population. What we learned from this is that there is an agreement between the increase in vaginal, or in that case in core temperature, to the portion, to the proportion of the increase of what we record as heavy breathing 
in the population that was monitored. And this association or this agreement allow us to state and to declare in that case that recording the percent of heavy breathing in a population of milking cows can replace the recording of vaginal temperature. This is very, very important because from now on, we don't have to put this expensive equipment in portion of the cows and getting retrospective data. It is enough to put the tags on the cows to get current data from the from 100% of the covered population. And this is huge, okay? Because it is actually the same data that is serving us to calculate other elements such as reproduction, health, and so on. Um, this agreement and, and, and what, is mo what is even important to that as, as the core temperature is increasing and the differences between animal is increasing in, in the same, I would say, in the same trend, the agreement between the low, the, the, the extremes is kept as for the average. And uh, this is really safeguarding the uh, translating this capability, this understanding into application because there are no outliers. There, is, there are no cases where the cow is, is, is turning um, warm, but not as fast as other cows. And the pattern of increase in the percentage of cows that recorded with heavy breathing is changing. When stretching the, 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 the previous understanding over a course of a day, and this is while introducing this group of animals to cooling sessions. So the animals were actually brought to a, the holding pen where cows are waiting before the milking and being exposed to circulation of air and water. And as you can see over the in the graph, we have the time in the day on the x-axis. The right-hand side y-axis is the proportion or the percent of cows that are recorded with heavy breathing, which is represented by the dotted line. And on the left X, X, A, Y axis, we have the, the vaginal temperature that is represented by the continuous line. And we do see a very nice agreement between the times where the vaginal temperature was rising and the increase in the percent of cows that are recorded with heavy breathing. Once introduced to a cooling session, the, the temperature and the expression of heavy breathing is dropping in the same trend, in the same direction, and so on throughout the day. Moreover, it is very, very important to note that the heavy breathing is actually dropping faster and earlier to the vaginal temperature. And this is very important because as we stated earlier, cows are sp splitting their time budget, their daily time budget between positive and negative activities. What we learn from this is, as we say that a cow cannot do two things on the same time, according to, at least according to the tag, is that although the vaginal temperature was still high, cows could shift to a positive activity, in that case, rumination and feed collection. And this is even shifting or moving a little bit more responsibility on our tag data, stating that we really need to listen to the tag data and not to the vaginal temperature. Because in the end of the day, we want to maximize the time that the cows are ruminating and collecting feed and rest, and do not spend this extra time over cooling while cows can actually manage without it. And I'll show example in the, examples in the coming slides. Taking all this science into our system, um, we provide in our system, it doesn't matter if you're using heat and pro or sensor. This is a picture from actually from a data flow system where we have milk, milk records and behavior and the tag records, the monitoring and milking data. 
And I'm using this one because I want to show you the milk yields as well as the tag data. Um, we provide two dimensions and our focus, I'll start with explaining you and showing you the within the day dimension. Um, so on the y x on the x axis we have the time in the day in a five minutes resolution, while on the y x we have the percent of cows doing something throughout the time that we are plotting. We're using three type of data items or three series. The red one will stand for the percent of cows recorded with heavy breathing. The purplish one will be cows recorded with rumination, while the green will be cows recorded with eating time. As we're looking at group of animals, it is not an individual cow. Some of the cows will do different activities and we just lay it out on top of each other as we do here. So we have here some sort of an overlayering of something like 20% at this point in time, like in 10 in the morning. We have an overlaying of something like 25% of cows doing heavy breathing, while something like 25% of the, percent of the cows are doing eating activity, and about 30, 30 plus of the cows, percent of the cows are doing rumination. And as you can see here, this red line, and if you remember from the previous slides where we found some sort of an agreement between a core temperature of around 39 degrees Celsius to a 10% of the cows that are performing heavy breathing. This is the beginning of heat stress. We state that if as a group, the cows are stepping above the 10%, they are probably in need of being introduced to a cooling system or a mitigation solution. And if this is stretching and, and develop to be a clear trend, cows needs help here, okay? So you have here two examples where cows being showing the need of, of help because they cannot manage the physical situation by themselves as you have an increased and consistent trend of increased heavy breathing. Then they are taken into a, in a, a place where they can be introduced with a cooling solution. All, within 10 minutes, the heavy breathing is dropping way below the threshold while, and this is the drop of negative activity, while on the same time, we have a very sharp increase and steady increase in a positive activity of rumination. There is followed by, by and let's use this area, followed later on after cows are released back to the, to the, to the barn and they're visiting the, where they are fed, the, the feed bank. So they are spending almost an hour collecting feed and then ruminating a little bit. Then they cannot manage it anymore. And then they are expressing heavy breathing, a, a consistent trend of heavy breathing. We identify this trend and taking them back to the shower. So this circulation of understanding the cows cannot manage it, introduce them to a mitigation plan, and allowing them to collect enough bouts, enough sections of relief throughout the day to do enough of positive activities. This, this interval of negative and positive activities throughout the day actually secure a couple of things. First, intake. We are struggling for feed intake during the summer when feed intake is damaged too much, too much cows are losing body, losing milk production, losing reproduction. We are struggling for, I would say, human pH to a certain degree, because if cows do not eat enough throughout the day, they are sorting and munching when it's possible. And this is introducing a risk of subacutic ruminacidosis and so on and so on. So by intervening, understanding that we need to, to, to act and acting, we actually secure something like four to five proper rest and feeding bouts that helps us a lot. I'm showing here an example how this dimension, this within the day dimension can help us with, with, a, with managing uh, malfunctions and problems. For example, in, in, as in this case, uh, the electricity relay in the barn actually being jammed 
And although on the, on, the, on the cooling controller in the farm, it seems like everything okay, the fans were actually not starting on as should. It is, if you're not walking in the barn all the time, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to, to, to understand that something is wrong because the system is telling you that everything is okay. I would say your electricity system in the farm is telling you that everything is okay. But our system identified that although there was supposed to be a cooling session here, the cows actually did not respond positive to this cooling session. And as a result, the cold temperature, the, the heavy breathing, the negative activity was still held up. And that actually sent the, the technician that was really triggering the technician to go to the barn to check what is happening, to fix the problem. And then things went back to as should. So it's not just to manage the cows, it is to manage our, our system, our barn equipment, and make sure that everything is okay. Now, moving from the within the day to the along days dimension. Um, so we stated that we can manage the daily, the time budget and the schedule of the cow, but how the cow, now the next question that we want to manage is how cows, how our cows are managing throughout the summer. So I'm sharing here two examples coming from two neighbor farms where the biggest differential, and it's warm over there, it's above 40 degrees Celsius during summertime, and the humidity is kind of high, it's around 50%, almost tropical weather. And the biggest differentiator between the farms is the equipment, the, the, the housing types, the mitigation plan, and the production volume. So cows on farm one actually producing much more milk than cows on than the cows on farm two. You can see this one on the this yield curve over here. Um, this, the data is the same data. So we have on the x-axis, we have instead of the time in the day, the, the days or, or in between days where each dot, each data point is a day. On the y-axis, we have minutes of an activity throughout the day. So it's not the percent of what the cows are doing, it's the minutes through the day. And we have the same, the same data items. Red is heavy breathing, green eating time, and rumination laid up on top of each other. And you can immediately see that farm two is expressed, the cows in farm two are expressing much higher volumes of heavy breathing compared to farm one. And this is on expense of rumination, eating time, and of course, milk yield. I can share with you that the feeding ration, it is a total mixed ration and the feeding ration are almost identical. The and the days within milk are almost identical between the farms. Then one of the things that, or the, the main takeaway from, from these examples are that if we are judging the summer over, over the days, over the course of longer duration, we just want to make some sort of a, of, of a trend line and to, to make sure that as a whole, our cows are not spending more than, let's say, two to three hours of heavy breathing throughout the day. Because if they do more than that, this will have a devastating effect on reproduction and milk production. As there are several studies as we have here. So this farm, for example, you can immediately see that if you're drawing some sort of a trend line between the peaks, it will lay somewhere around the 240 minutes compared to the 100 and 80 minutes of farm one. Translating these total minutes into uh, conception or preg risk or conception rates, we know from studies in Israel that the amount of time that cows are exposed to heavy to, to heat stress actually have a direct effect on the conception on the conception during summer. And you as you have here in this table. Um, a range of something like two and a half hours will probably have very little to no effect. And as we go to something like seven hours, this is dropping the, the, the reproductive performance to almost nothing. Judging additional literature, here we have an alignment between THI. So this is a histogram between the THI and reproductive uh, elements. And... Um, 
understanding that the THI, there is some sort of a merit between THI and our behavior, we can more or less expect the same thing. And, um, and we can say that once cows are exposed to heavy breathing, it is not just that the reproduction is dropping, it is the differences, the diversity between animals is increasing. So the animals that are actually are more prone will suffer more. And it's making, a, and the situation of dropping production and increasing diversity is probably the worst management situation in a farm. And we definitely want to keep our, our cows on the more controlled area. Judging the long term, we know from literature that there is a strong a, a correlation between early and embryonic loss. So you, you made all the effort to detect it, to breed the cow. She actually got pregnant, but then the, the exposure to, to heat stress or to the unmanaged physical situation actually derived an early embryonic loss somewhere between day three to day 20 to day 30. And we do find a significant difference between summer and winter in the proportion of early embryonic loss when the thermal conditions are not managed. And this is moreover a strong motivation to know that the cows need, need help and then to, to actually provide them with the proper mitigation. Uh, from some literature, we know that it's not exposed to heat stress is, will not only affect the current generation, but the future replacement as we have from this study, associating between performance of future replacement, future heifers, that is dropping due to the fact that they, while being pregnant, their mother was, expo was exposed to heat stress in the first trimester. When judging health, um, we do find association between uh, increasing somatic cell count and uh, and uh, and ex being exposed to heat stress, and and moreover, I would say that this is um, the increasing somatic cell count are actually exposed in latency to the to the drop in milk yield. Uh, so it is somewhat associated with the fact that cows are under chronic stress. And uh, there are several, and, and you have here the layout of the main elements that actually influence in this situation. Um, translating all the shared insight into economy, coming back to our second slide, is that we have to remember that whatever we do in the farm costs money. Mitigating heat stress costs electricity, water, sewage if you have to pay for sewage because you're actually putting a lot of water into the system and labor. And um, a system such, such as ours is really helping us with optimizing between what the cows need and actually asking the cows when they need help, not to calculate from the outside or to assess through physical parametrics. We are physically asking the cows how they feel and if they need help and utilize this understanding into our mitigation of when and how much to do. And by that I'm done and I'm open for questions.